Hello everyone, my name is Arvid Schneider. I'm a lighting supervisor working in visual effects and I have been using Arnold for more than a decade and in this video I want to show you some exciting must-know features in Arnold. So let's get started. Let's have a look at OpenPBR. OpenPBR is a new shader that ships natively with Maya and Arnold and it is kind of the new evolution of the standard surface shader in collaboration with Adobe and Autodesk, this shader has been developed and it's kind of a updated, more physical, plausible shader than the previous iteration and obviously it is now working with all the supported uh, applications and DCCs as well. At the moment, you can see I have this little cute dinosaur asset. It's running on the GPU at the moment and I've got some lights on it. At the moment, it's using the default standard surface shader but now I want to show you how to get it working with OpenPBR. It's pretty straightforward as it's kind of the same shader but just a little bit evolved. So all you gotta do is hit tab and go open PBR to get that new shader. And it just is pretty much very similar as the previous version. You can see the parameters are pretty much the same. A couple of naming differences and a couple of order like layering differences. I pull up the standard surface shader here. You can see if I jump between them, sheen is named to fuzz and then there's a couple of more parameters. I think um, emission got more parameters as well. Or was it? Tra oh, transmission got some more settings as well. So all in all, I will go through those now. Uh, let's see just what it what the differences are. So open PBR, just select my geo, right click and assign it quickly. So now that is applied and the usual things, you've got your, your weights, your diffuse roughness, your switch to metallic or electric material, then you've got specular weight, like on and off pretty much, IOR roughness, anisotropy, transmission to make things transparent, this is obviously based on the specular roughness, so for a sandblast that you crank up the roughness, for a clear glass you reduce the roughness close to zero, then you've got dispersion to create the breaking of wavelength, which kind of gives you the RGB look. Anisotropy to have more anisotropic shading for volumes once you enable scattering. Then you get that working. So we have subsurface. This is now a brute force method. It does not have any approximation. So this is by the name brute forcing subsurface scattering. It's very accurate. It's slower, but it's the most accurate you can get. Then you've got anisotropy as well. Obviously, radius defines how deep it travels. The radius scale is kind of to add some color to it. And then you have your base color, pretty much. Uh, fuzz, as I said before, is the sheen. So if I have like a darker material, it's more apparent. You can now see that the sheen kind of gives it this fuzzy, fur-looking color. This is kind of used to mimic peach fuzz or like carpets or fur on a grazing angle. Then we have coat. That's quite obvious what it does. It's essentially adding another layer of specular on top. Different uh, parameters. Darkening is the energy conservation. Got its own IOR, obviously. Roughness values, own anisotropy, own bump mapping. And yeah, as you can see, the stuff, the, sh the layers beneath it, let's say the specular, the base get darker because that's how energy conservation works. But you can control it artistically using the darkening slider now. Then we've got thin film, which is for thin film interference that kind of mimics some kind of, what's the word, oleophobic layer between the specular and the base. Kind of gives you a little bit of like a soap bubble look. Emission, self-explanatory. It makes the object emit light. Thin walled is used for kind of a paper effect for subsurface objects or for transmission. It's more optimized, it's quicker, but it gives you a different look. And that's pretty much it. So now let's hook up a couple of uh, materials. So I've got my AI image here on the left, which is our base color, hooked it up to the base color slot, make sure we have everything else disabled. So we played with a couple of values here. That is all off, so we are good to go. We've got a very high IOR. You can click here to just say skin, but we can just go 1.4 for the specular and we do have the roughness, you can see now. Our little dinosaur is kind of glossy. We do have a shader for this, so I can just hook up the specular roughness to here, and you can now see that we get some nice look on the head. It's a little bit more broken up. 
and let's hop to the next one we can connect the bump mapping to it so that goes to normal camera and you can now see we ha we added a lot more detail to the dinosaur lots of more lots more wrinkles and stuff and then we can also hook up the displacement shader to the shading engine to get some actual displacement happening that should now transform the edges and you can see we got way more detail here on the back side and but that's nothing specific to open pbr i just wanted to plug everything in but that's kind of what it's all about and now if you want to give for instance some peach fuzz on it you can obviously just enable that you can see now everything gets pretty white and based on the roughness this is kind of just on the edges or going all around it and this is kind of what it's doing it looks like there's a little bit of a yeah color like fur around it technically what you can do you can use the AI color correct node and use the base color as the as a fuzz color let's try that so now we kind of have the same color that is the base color that is kind of the peach fuzz but we can for instance now gamma it up a little or increase saturation so now we have this this soft feeling wrapping over the dinosaur you can see now it's quite obvious what's going on now on the grazing angles you can see this is now just on the front if I just go a little bit closer and just isolate this you can see the effects of just that and it's a cool effect depending what you're after but this just shows the overlook and yeah so that was a quick introduction to open PBR I hope this gives you a good insight and yeah let's see what else we have all right so now let's have a look at the new volume diffusion models in the Arnold standard volume shader as you can see I do have a cloud asset here on the left and at the moment I have zero volume bounces, but let's just uh, bump them up to maybe a value of three. You can see everything gets a little bit brighter, more light is being bouncing within the scene. And again, I'm working on the GPU, five camera A and max A on 40. And that's pretty much our global options. And then this is the current shader assigned. I reduce the density from one to 0.5 and the rest are the default values. So now let's try to work up the shader to get a nice cloud looking render so first of all i want to increase the scatter color at the moment it's the default is like i think 0.5 and let's just go up to maybe 0.95 to make the cloud already brighter and again this is now using already some volume depth of three and you can see if i put it this to zero so you can already see the big contrast happening so back to three and now the scatter diffusion has the diffusion option, the bias, gain, roughness, and more controls to fine tune it. And even anisotropy, which is nice to get more backlighting, like more light scattering through. So the first thing is you can increase diffusion 0.25. And the more we increase this, you will see the more the shadows kind of disappear. You can see if I crank it up, it gets really bright. And you can see now how scattery the volume gets and it looks already super translucent and this is kind of what's what clouds do right the light goes into the medium and then it scatters around a lot and yeah these controls obviously you can go full blast so this is now full full on diffusion you can see and the more you crank it up the longer the render times will be as it has to calculate more so i would suggest to find a good balance of probably your volume depth because this also increases render time significantly and then play with that and then maybe crank up the fusion so you have less volume bounces maybe we can even get away with one let's try that so there's lots of options to play with uh, you can see on one it already scatters a lot now if i go back to zero you can see without the fusion and if i bring back the fusion you can already see now how nicely it scatters so it's probably best to keep your volume depth pretty low but then deal with the diffusion within the shader i think that's a pretty nice way of working and then you've got the bias like how much it goes from one side to the other essentially of the medium so on on zero it's kind of off again and you can see we crank it up and then it slowly fades out again so the default is uh, 0 0.15 which i would say should leave it at because it gives you the it yields the best results and then you have diffusion gain which will increase the, or decrease uh, the slope of scatter diffusion based on the mid-range value. So you can reduce this 
so it gets kind of more clampy looking a little bit higher you can see now everything gets the same gray kind of value or you can go higher and it more changes to the other side of the curve pretty much so 0 0.5 is a good default as well and in the end all you have to do technically is play with the diffusion value you can see 0 and 1 uh, 0 and 0.5 I mean how it yields uh, the best results and you can see by grabbing a value what kind of gives you the most diffusion versus the less And then with the diffusion applied and my settings as follows, you can kind of see the result. It looks like a very realistic cloud. You get really nice light scattering through the medium. You get some nice diffuse lighting on it. And then obviously the secondary lighting that illuminates the inside of the cloud. And I feel this new shader really makes it easy to make clouds believable. And it, not just clouds, but volumes in general. The same would apply to explosions, whatever you can have light scatter within which makes it way more realistic because that's naturally how light would scatter within. Now let's talk about crypto mats and a very new update to Arnold GPU is that crypto mats are now supported in GPU rendering, which is awesome. So you can see I have my little baby asset here. It has already some materials assigned through USD and we have a simple sky dome light. And to get CryptoMat working, all you have to do is hop into render settings, go to AUVs and enable these three crypto AUVs. And now if you toggle between the AUVs, you can see the crypto asset uh, view, which you can see it's all independent. Then you have your material assignments and your object crypto objects. And that allows you to save this as an EXR and pull it up in your compositing software to easily create mats for color correcting, and making, yeah, grading your final image. Now let's talk about global light sampling in Arnold. This scene here consists roughly of, I would say, 200 lights. And global sampling does make a huge impact once you have more than, let's say, 10 lights. And let's say if you have 100 lights, the time to render is almost 2x quicker and if you have a thousand lights it's almost 3x quicker and you can see as we're flying through the scene where I place the lights they are inside the buildings on the outside I'm using mesh lights as well and if global sampling is off each light is controlled by its own sample settings and that's the benefit of global light sampling as you treat each kind of light with one global parameter which is quite powerful and in the render settings, you can see it only works or it works best with adaptive sampling enabled. So make sure you use that. And also under the lights section, you then have the control for global light sampling, which allows you to sample each light globally with that setting up there. It's also best to keep the low light threshold on its default value as that is recommended. And as you can see, we have the denoiser enabled plus global light sampling and I feel on this resolution it is a pretty quick update and rendering is really fun because it's so interactive, right? And the more lights you add, technically, the better this setting will be.